81, not bad. Zoro Scar is another 8. Oh, hey guys, how you doing? Uh, big theory incoming, it's happening now, Denjiro, but I just have to take a few more measurements first, so just give me a hot minute here. All right, Tashigi's leg is 40, and uh, her personality is uh, another 15. That's pretty impressive, Tashigi. Okay, I think I got everything I need. All right, whew. You guys ready? I'm, I'm ready for this. Okay, so uh, isn't it weird that in the chapter with Kozuki Odin finally being revealed, I think more people have questions about Denjiro, um, this little orphan boy from the flower capital, more than Kozuki Odin himself? At least I do. You know, you want to tell me Kozuki Odin was such a biggity badass he could redirect rivers with his sheer physical might? Fine, I don't need an explanation further on how that works, but what's the deal with Denjiro? This is the stuff I need to know. All right, so the prevailing theories I saw abound, and I brought it up in the video, and just basically going off of his physical appearance, you think Koshiro. At least that's the first thing I arrived at. I'm looking at it, and I'm like, all right, if nothing else, they look similar, right? You got to give me at least that much. And considering this is Oda we're talking about here, I guarantee you that is not a coincidence. All right, if you were to tell me that Denjiro that we see in the chapter you know, is like 12-year-old Koshiro, I could buy that. They look very similar. They have the same hair color. They have the same hairstyle with the ponytail. They both wear glasses. They just look similar. Um, you know, this Denjiro we saw wielding a white sword, which looks similar to the Wado Ichimonji. We don't really know. So, um, a bunch of people commented on why that doesn't make sense, and I actually have a comment here from a fella named Rostel. Um, Rostel was handy because he basically laid out all the biggest critiques about this in one place. He wasn't the only person to bring up these issues, but he kind of, like, uh, put them all into one single comment, so thanks to Rostel there. The first um, issue here is uh, the issue with the Wado itself. So, you mean to tell, the basic premise is this, you mean to tell me Zoro has had the Wado Ichimonji strapped on his side next to Kinemon for like many story arcs, you know, Punk has or Dressrosa, he's running around with the Wado Ichimonji, Kinemon and Denjiro were apparently very well acquainted even back when Kinemon was 15 years old. They were like apparently like working together here, probably running scams with the Yakuza and the Flower Cap and all that. So they're acquainted with each other. If Denjiro really did have the Wado Ichimonji, Kinemon would have noticed it at some point. Now my mind immediately flashed back to the point when um, you know, they were sailing from Punk Hazard to Dress Rosa and Kinemon noticed Shusui on Zoro's belt. And Kinemon gets mighty pissed about that because this is the sword of, you know, Ryuma Shimosuke, the sword god of Wano, and he attacks Zoro, and Zoro's like, hey, calm down, it's, I can explain everything, I mean, not really, but I can kind of explain everything, I'm not the one that stole this, that's the point of the story, right? So, you'd figure, like, you know, you know, if Kinemon noticed Shusui, why didn't he notice the Wado, if it really was the same sword? Now, at first I was thinking, it's like, well... You know, to be fair, I mean, just by looking at the sword side by side, I mean, Shusui definitely has a more, um, you know, visually unique aesthetic. You know, Wado is just, you know, white hilt, circular guard, white scabbard. You know, Shusui's got this whole design with the, the, the little uh, Sakura petal scabbard and, the, you know, the guard itself is shaped like a flower. Like, and also the fact that because Ryuma is revered as a sword god so much in Wano, you know, every child is probably aware of what his sword looks like, you know, like every child is probably like you see an image of Ryuma probably all over Wano back in the day, you know, like when Kinemon was growing up and everything, maybe not so much anymore because of Orochi taking over and everything. But the point is, because this was such a well-known blade, no duh, Kinemon noticed it right away. Um, so I'm like, maybe, maybe he was so fraught with anger with Shusui, he didn't notice Wado at that moment. But it still doesn't make any sense because Kinemon was running around with Zoro all over Dressrosa. They went to Zo together, and then they traveled to Wano, and they spent some time in Wano. You'd think at some point in time during all of those days at sea, traveling between islands, at some point, Kinemon would have noticed... Hey, Zoro, what's the name of that white sword you have? <laughs> you know, and, and Zoro would have told him, like, there's like, are you going to attack me over this one too? I might. He's like, no, he probably would have told him. He's like, oh, this is, uh, this is my, you know, Owazumono, the Wadoichi Monji. And then Kinemon would have been, Wadoichi Monji? That's the blade that my best friend Denjiro wielded back in the day. How did you get it, you know? So he probably, he would have definitely, not, not probably, he definitely would have mentioned it at some point. Um, he would have been aware of it, you know? Probably the same thing with the Sandai Kotetsu. At some point, Kinemon probably asked Zoro about it. He'd be like, hey, do you have the, uh, is that the Sandai Kotetsu? And Zoro's like, yeah, it is. And he's like, oh. 
you know that's cursed, right? And he's like, yeah, it is. But it's like, Kanemon doesn't have, like, a real big connection with the Sandai, but he, they probably still talked about it. You know, Kanemon, a samurai from Wano. His name is Zoro. He's like a samurai. They probably talked about swords, you know? So, yeah, that that's kind of a hole there. Um, the second issue is that of Kuina. So, Kuina was born 22 years ago, and it was stated in the Viva card she was born in the East. Now, something about that Viva card I mentioned in the video was like, hey, it says right there in the Viva card, Koshiro was from the East. So, therefore, uh, it's, it's going to be kind of difficult for him to be, you know, uh, Denjiro from Wano, right? Well, people were quick to say, he's like, well... You know, for a few reasons. Number one, like, Oda might just not want to spoil anybody. I mean, if he says right there in the Viva card, Koshiro was born in Wano, that's kind of a giveaway, right? So maybe w Oda didn't want to spoil anything. I mean, it's the same thing that happens with a lot of data books. Like, for instance, Jinbei is a member of the Straw Hats, but if you go back in the data books before Viva card, does it actually spoil that Jinbei is going to become a member of the Straw Hats? No. I mean, like... When it comes to Koshiro, it, the people were saying, like, hey, you know, it could have been a situation where the name Koshiro originated from the East, but he himself was born in Wano. Uh, but we'll get back to that in a second. But we do know, at least, that Kuina was born in the East from Shimosuke Village, all right? And that was 22 years ago. So... You know, the idea here is that Denjiro fled Wano after Kaido and Orochi took over, but that was 20 years ago. So the timelines really don't, they don't really sync up there, right, for that situation to be the case, right? It seemed like, you know, Koshiro was already living in the East with his wife, and they gave birth to Kuino in the East 22 years ago, uh, two years before Kaido and Orochi took over Wano. So, yeah, that doesn't make any sense for him to leave early. I mean, I guess you could always come up with something like, oh, this is the reason why Denjiro had to leave early. But that can't be the case either. Because with the situation with Lady Toki sending everybody into the future, except for Kawamatsu and Ashura Doji and Denjiro and everybody, when Kinemon and everybody arrived in the present storyline, they were convinced that Denjiro was still around somewhere in Wano, right? So if Denjiro decided to leave Wano before Orochi took over... You know, Kinemon would have arrived back in the present. They'd be like, okay, we got to find Ashura Doji and we got to find Kawamatsu. Denjiro left the country before we time jumped, so he might not still be here. He might be somewhere else in the world. We might not be able to find him. No, Kinemon was pretty certain that Denjiro was alive and he was somewhere in the country. They just had no information on what happened to the dude. All right, so, hmm, that's, that's something that's odd there, okay? The last point to bring up here is a point addressing the land of Ringo and their customs. Remember, when we were exploring the land of Ringo, you know, Kawamatsu was there, Gyukimaru, Zoro, and Hiyori, uh, they were talking about how there's this tradition in the northern regions of Wano where when a child is born, they receive a sword, and they keep that sword with them from birth until death, and it actually serves uh, as their tombstone when they die, right? That's why there's so many swords in the Ringo graveyard, okay? That, like, Oni Maru was collecting as Guki Maru. Okay, makes sense there. Um, so, if this Kozaboro dude that left Wano over 50 years ago, Kozaboro being the swordsmith of both the Wado Ichimonji and the Enma, he left Wano 50 something years ago, arrived in the east on a ship, probably the ship that Oda was talking about in the SBS, lands in the east starts up Shimosuke Village, names it Shimosuke Village because Kozaburo uh, was a member of the Shimosuke clan, named it that, started it up, had a child, Koshiro, and then gave the Wado his creation to his son, Koshiro. Now, also, you could throw, it's like, okay, well, what? Well, Koshiro eventually would, you know, get married and have Kuina, and he would give Wado to Kuina, but that doesn't make any sense because he's supposed to have that sword to his death. But remember, Kozaboro was the man that was born and raised in Wano, so he has that custom. Koshiro, he might have been taught about Wano's customs, but he didn't live in Wano. So maybe when he got older, he decided, you know, I'm going to... This isn't the land of Wano. I'm going to change the custom a little bit, and I'm going to give my sword that my dad gave me to my daughter, Kuina. You know, instead of, you know, keeping it for myself until death. Uh, because maybe he just like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to start my own traditions. You know, we're not in Wano where my dad grew up. We're in the East where yeah, I can maybe make some, I, I, it's my decision, right? And then Kuina passed away and then he gave it to Zora to carry on her legacy. Okay, so Ko Koshiro was kind of doing his own thing. There is definitely a connection between Koshiro and Kozaburo. Like, it is way too much... Uh, of, you know, like these things lining up for it to be a coincidence, all right? Just the fact, look at their names alone. 
Koshiro. Ko Zaburo. They both start with Ko and end with O. All right. Uh, there's numbers in their names, you know. So, you know, that, that that's way too much of a coincidence here. Okay. So, Koshiro is definitely Ko Zaburo's son. I would be blown away if it was anything other than that, all right? That's because the names are so remarkably similar, and they live in the East, and, you know, they had the Wado and everything like that. Okay, all right, that's that's all well and good for Koshiro, Matt. That's fine and dandy. But what about Denjiro, then? What What's this thing? I'm like, all right. I'm gonna throw an idea out there. Maybe some of you were already thinking about it. I might not be the first person, but I... I was really happy when I just, this idea popped into my head, all right? What if Denjiro is the twin brother of Koshiro and, because I saw some people mentioning that, but I want to take it one step further. Koshiro is the father of Kuina. Denjiro is the father of Tashigi. Now, I admit, that's not as cut and dry as the whole Koshiro Kozaboro thing. It's not, it's not as cut and dry there. Few things to mention here, though. When we get introduced to Denjiro in the last chapter, what does his little info box say? It says his name, Denjiro, which, by the way, I was looking at the name itself to see if there was some clues with the kanji. Um, it starts off with the kanji Den for summon or to propagate. Uh, but nothing, nothing that really immediately hints at anything bigger than that. And then the, uh, the, the Jiro part is just written in, um, written in Katakana. But the other thing it states in his info box is that he's an orphan boy from the capital. Now, you know, orphans running around Wano, that's not unusual. But let's, let's paint a picture here. Let's throw this out here, okay? Kozaboro had two sons. Let's just assume this. He had two sons. His, the, the child that came out first, he gave the name Koshiro. Because that follows his name. You know, I am the father, Kozaboro. My firstborn son will be named Koshiro following the naming scheme, okay? Then, second child was born shortly after that, who he named Denjiro. Jiro can mean second son in Japanese. And this was actually just mentioned like a few chapters ago when Odin was on Roger's ship and he was talking about like Shanks and Buggy Jiro. He was calling Buggy like he was the second son of the family. Like Shanks being the first son of the of the crew, the Roger Pirates, Buggy being the second. And and they're, they're, Buggy and Shanks are both the same age, so Buggy was just like, how come I'm the second son? Right? So that was just mentioned in the most one of those recent chapters, okay? So he's just like, all right, oh, we had two sons instead of just one. All right, so my first son's Koshiro, because, you know, that's that's the naming scheme. What am I going to name my second child? Uh, what about Denjiro? Because, you know, J you know, summon, propagate, that's a you know, nice kanji to put there. And then also Jiro, meaning second son. All right? Now, this was 51 years ago. But then let's say something happened. Kozaburo and, and uh, his wife and Koshiro left the land of Wano and went to the east. Okay? And they had to leave Denjiro behind in some way, some reason. There was some reason why Denjiro didn't go. He stayed behind, okay? Um, and you could come up with any number of reasons for why that was the case. So, you know, you know, orphan typically means your parents are both dead. But in this instance, it could apply, you know, um, because they're gone. They're not in the country. And Wano is so isolated at this point. You know, they might, as, they might as well be dead. Or maybe Denjiro was raised believing his parents were dead or something. Um, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, your parents left out to sea and they broke the laws of the country and they were never heard from again. So, yeah, they're probably dead. So, Denjiro, at the very least, he didn't have parents growing up, so that's why he was considered an orphan. So, that's a little that's a little interesting uh, thing there to bring up. You could still say, it was like, well, what about the Viva card? It said Koshiro was born in the East. It's like, well, you know, he was maybe technically born in Wano, but he was raised in the East, or the East is where he was from. So, like I said, you could you could bend that. Even in the review, I said, like, Oda could bend the Viva card. It's not, like, ironclad set in stone there, okay? So, Denjiro... Uh, grew up in the land of Wano, and he did not have the Wado because Kozaboro gave his firstborn son Koshiro the Wado Ichimonji. We know that Kozaboro was a renowned swordsmith. He made the Wado and he made the Enma. Those were like his prized creations, but, you know, you don't get to be a prized swordsmith with only creating two blades. Probably not. He probably created other swords that are just less famous than the Wado and the Enma. Right? So it's possible that he took, like, okay, he gave Enma, 
to Odin or the Kozuki family, like maybe Kozaboro, like, this is my prized creation, Enma. It's a sword that sucks the hockey out of you. It's too dangerous for my family to have, so I'll give it to the Kozukis as a gift or something. It's like as a gift of goodwill. It's like, oh, this is pretty cool. And then, you know, Kozuki, probably Sukeyake had it, then he gave it to Odin, right? The Wado he kept for his own family, gave it to his firstborn son, Koshiro. But what about a second son, Denjiro? Um, he probably had other swords that were not Owazumono rank, maybe Ryu Wazumono, maybe Rego Wazumono. Another sword that he had, maybe very similar looking to the Wado, and he gave, they bequeathed that to his second son, Denjiro. Something, like I said, something, any number of things could have happened for them to leave the country, and they had to leave Denjiro behind. Maybe they, I'm not saying they abandoned him, I'm saying that just like, okay, something happened, we need to get out of here, we can't take him with us, or something happened for, like, we can't take him with us, so we're just gonna leave him like a baby with this sword, and hopefully he'll turn out okay. Something happened, alright? And so Denjiro grew up with nothing but, like, a sword that resembles the Wado to, resemb to remember his parents by, okay? And that's why he carries it around, so not the exact same sword, right? Um, that would also explain the family resemblance there, because I don't know. I, I don't know about this. Let me know if this is possible. If anybody, anybody out there that are twins, let me know. Is it more likely that if your parents are twins, that their kids will also be twins? Like, for example, like, the way that I'm spinning this is Denjiro gets married to some lady. They have a baby. It's Tashigi. Would that make sense for Koshiro to also get married to someone else? have a baby, and for it to be Kuina, and for both of those children to have family resemblance? Because Kuina and Tashigi are clearly, like, the, the resemblance is so uncanny, once again, this is not going to be a coincidence. They're not the same person. Oda has gone so far to explain, yeah, Kuina and Tashigi are definitely not one in the same. Because, well, for one thing, Tashigi is actually a year older than Kuina. Uh, Tashigi uh, is 23 right now, Kuina would have been 22, Zoro is 21. So that's the difference of ages there. So, and, and Oda has also drawn Tashigi at a young age, and she had the glasses back then. Kuina didn't have the glasses. But there's certainly a resemblance here. All right, so if, you know, Kozaboro gave birth to... Well, he didn't give birth. I always make that mistake. It's just like, men do not... This is not an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, okay? It's just like, yeah. But Kozaboro had two sons, Koshiro, Denjiro, and then they both had you know, two daughters, they both had a daughter respectively, and then those daughters resembled each other like twins. Is that possible? Because that seems feasible to me. I don't know, but all right. So let's just go along with that logic here. Uh, there are still a few holes with this. Uh, for one thing being that it was stated also in a Viva card, Tashigi was born in the East. All right. You could spin it in the same way that you could have it being like, okay, Koshiro might not have been born in the East, but he's from the East. All right, Kuina and Ta oh, Ta Kuina was definitely born in the East. Tashigi might have not have been born in the East, but once again, she was raised in the East, so let's just go with that. Um, something else regarding Zoro, because the theory that in the last chapter I talked about, maybe Zoro was born in Wano and got taken out of Wano at some point. Um, just something I had to go back and reread, because this was something the anime and the manga actually switched up a little bit. The backstory between Zoro and Kuina at the dojo is a little bit different in the anime than in the manga. In the anime, it's set up as basically Zoro was not from Shimosuke Village. Zoro was just traveling around the various villages and dojos in the land of the East, uh, defeating them, and, you know, he eventually arrives at the Shimosuke Village at the dojo where he meets Kuina and is defeated by her and asks to be accepted into the dojo. Um, that's the anime. In the manga, it's pretty clear that Zoro was from the dojo to begin with. Uh, because we see him training in the dojo. That's the first time we see him in that flashback. He's training at the dojo. The other kids are talking about how Zoro is the strongest warrior in the dojo uh, when he's defeated by Kuina. And Kuina is just like, oh, well, I guess he's not that strong because I was able to defeat him, right? So, it, and it really did seem that he has a previous relationship with Koshiro because Koshiro's like, oh, Zoro, you lost again, huh? Well, what can you do? You know, so it really does seem like in the manga he is originally from Shimosuke. We don't know the origin of Zoro's, you know, like where is he, where he was born or who his parents were or anything, but that's just a little bit of a, of a misconception there because of the ways the anime and the manga handled it differently. Uh, there were some people that were commenting that were like, wait, didn't, wasn't Zoro like from some other random village and then traveled to Shimosuke? Yeah, only in the anime. In the manga, he's there from day one, so yeah.
Now, at this point, I would also ask, you know, below to, you know, post out reasons why this doesn't make sense so we can look through those and we can maybe puzzle this out and be like, all right, well, can't that can't make sense because of this reason or anything. But, um, you know, the biggest hurdle really here is just Tashigi's place of origin. But it's like, hey, Orochi takes over Wano. Can Amon and the group go to the future? Denjiro decides to leave the country, maybe to get help, and just ends up in the east. And he meets a woman, and then they have... Tashigi, and then they raise there in the east, and then that's the reason Denjiro is not around, um, because it really does seem to imply that Denjiro is either dead, or he's not in Wano, because they couldn't find any intel about Denjiro's current whereabouts with their information network. Now, granted, the Rebellion doesn't have a great information network, it's not as good as Orochi's, uh, for obviously reasons, but, you know, it's like they couldn't find anything out about the dude. Ashura Doji doesn't know what happened to him, Kawamatsu has no idea what happened to him, they don't know where Denjiro is. I don't like to think he's dead, so that means he probably, or if he is dead, there's there's more to the story than just, you know, Denjiro d tried to fight against Kaido 20 years ago after the time jump and he died. So if he is dead now, there's something else to his story, right? Um, so he could have just left, went to the east, and then, you know, he might have died in the east. He could be dead right now. Uh, but then maybe Tashigi and Smoker arrive, and then Tashigi can be the new member of the Scabbards. People were throwing out about how, oh, Zoro is going to be the next member of the Scabbards. No, it could possibly be Tashigi, because I really want Tashigi to arrive in Wano, because she's the sword geek and everything. It would make sense. Plus, you know, Orochi was interested in Vegapunk and Smoker and Tashigi, or they apparently went to go see Vegapunk at his lab to, you know, drop off the Punk Hazard kids to see if he could find a cure. So I'm just saying, this is all connecting back in some way. Smoker and Tashigi with Vegapunk. Orochi wants Vegapunk. The government has dealings in Wano. Yeah, you could say Wano is closed borders. They don't let the Marines in. But hey, did you see Stampede? Smoker and Tashigi, they dressed up like pirates and they infiltrated the uh, pirate fest. They could dress up like samurai and inf infiltrate Wano. Plus, it's been a while since we've seen them. You know, it'd be cool to see those guys again, right? And, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I... For right now, I'm very happy, because I think this makes a decent amount of sense. Not perfect. You know, there's holes, but I think I could see this working, right? Alright, so let me know what you think below. Comment, well, you know, this, this doesn't make any sense teching because this, that, or the other thing, and we'll look through those, and I appreciate the feedback, but, um, yeah, yeah. I think this could go places, so, yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. This will be uh, Techie101 signing out. Prepare yourself, Barry. This is going to get intense. <laughs>